Hey all, with all of the schools currently closing down and all of the requirements now for virtual training and being able to interact with your students while they're not physically present in your school, I thought it would be helpful to give a perspective on what uh, my school is currently doing and seeing if you can use that to help and aid in whatever your school is currently facing. So in order to work with our students at the moment, we're using a Google product called Google Meet. Um, Google's gone out and said that they will allow any educational institution to be able to use their more professional version of the software. They can allow for up to 200 simultaneous connections going on at the same time within each individual classroom. So this is super great functionality. It works amazingly well and it's very, very simple, assuming that you have G Suite for your school. It's an amazingly simple solution and it's been working out great in the tests that we've been doing here. So with that, let's get into how to set this up and what it looks like. Okay, so first we want to start off in a uh, blank web page and we're going to go to meet.google.com. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I am signed in to the account that I wish to stream from. So this should be your school account because anyone within your domain will be able to instantly find the chat that you are starting simply by typing in the name of the meeting. How we've been doing this inside our school is to make it so that the name of the meeting is the last name of the teacher. And then at the scheduled time, all of the other students will simply join in the meeting with the last name of the teacher so they make sure they're getting into the right class. If you have a million Smiths in your school's teaching, just add a first initial right before it. So now that I'm in here, I'm gonna hit continue. It'll join, and at the moment, it's getting ready. It'll start my camera, it'll start my microphone, and there I am inside the camera. No one's here yet, so I'm just gonna wait a moment to see if any of my students arrive. Now, while we're in here, it's actually probably a good idea to mention this little note down here. If you're wearing headphones, that will keep the echo from happening so that your microphone won't pick up the sound coming from your computer and it won't reverberate and start making just this really big screechy effect happening. All right, so as we can see, Katarina has joined our call. So now all I have to do is hit join now to start my meeting. <laughs> And after a second, we have a student inside our chat room. Now here, hello. Hey. So as you can see, it's pretty uh, seamless as far as timing. It's not going to have a huge amount of lag. There'll be a little bit, but it should be pretty manageable. Katarina here is connecting to us from Brazil and I'm here in the United States. So this is even kind of the worst case scenario is connecting between different countries. So it doesn't matter if your students are local or far away, it should still work. So over here on the right, you can see that we can switch it over to see the screen that I'm presenting from. If I want to go back in, I can check and see who the participants are by clicking on this. And right now it's just me and Katarina. If I want to chat and have, say we have 50 different students in here, we don't want everyone to start speaking at the same time. So we could use the chat feature right here. So if I could say, could everyone say hi to let me know they can hear me. So assuming that they see that message, which they do, I hope we'll find out in a minute, I guess. Yay, hi, all right, so the system works, sweet. So there are a couple other interesting features that we can use throughout this. If I go down here to the settings, I simply click on the the image and then this menu will pop up. We can see A, the name of our room, and currently I'm the one connecting. We get all the meeting info and how that they can dial in with the phone if that's the best way they can. We also have uh, captions. So if I turn this on, it will actually auto hear what I'm saying and it will start writing it out. So if you have any students that are hard of hearing or they're having audio issues, this will help them be able to see and hear what you're saying. 
Now by hitting the sharing button, I can have all of the students see my screen. So if I want to pop up with a document that they can follow along with, all I have to do is choose the document that has any of the class notes and things that I want them to do during the class. Any homework that I happen to have, I will be able to highlight and you'll be able to run your class effectively from this. And then I can just hit stop sharing whenever I don't want to share anymore and want to come back into my screen. You'll always see the person that's talking on the main camera so that they're kind of taking control of that screen if you want. Uh, another feature that you have is you can go up here and click on the participants. And from here, you can manage all of the people in here. So right now, if I wanted to mute any of my students, I'd have full access to be able to do that. If I wanted to remove the student because they were in the wrong class or for whatever reason, then I could just click here and it automatically um, take them out of this presentation. I also have the ability to turn off my camera as well as mute my own microphone. So down here, if I hit this, it will turn off the microphone and she can no longer hear me. If I go like this, it'll turn off my camera. And um, actually, uh, Katarina, if you could turn off your camera for a second, we can see what that looks like. And you see it'll just pop up with a little circle that has their initial on it just so you can tell who is there, but you won't actually be able to see them if they have any privacy concerns as well, or if you do. All right, go ahead back on. As soon as we're ready to end the call, all we have to do is go down here and hit this red leave call button, and that'll bring us back to the home screen. So that's what it looks like to start a class as a teacher. If you're a student and you're about to connect to a class, it's basically the exact same process. So let's run through that really quickly now, just so you can see what it looks like on the student side of things. So you start off in the screen, and in this screen, it is just and from here, all you have to do is hit join and then type in the name of the person you want to connect to as long as they have already started a room with that name, just like we saw before. So if I'm connecting to my friend, I'll hit there. Her name is Kat and I'll hit continue. And then hit join now. Cool. Now you can see that this works perfectly fine. We have our friend Katarina and the other side all the way in Brazil. I'm again in the US, so you can see that it hey. doesn't matter. Hi. It doesn't matter if you're um, local or uh, abroad. It doesn't matter where your classroom or your student is. You'll still be able to make that connection and talk and teach in real time. So all you have to do if you want to disconnect from this is go down again and hit the red button. And there you have it. That's about all you need to be able to run your classes virtually with your students. I truly hope that you guys stay safe out there. And if you have any questions about what we went over in this video, please leave them in the comments and I'll gladly get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you so much and have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.